Good day everyone. I'm welcoming you to my online tutorial. Today we want to have a look at a question on Hooke's law. Hooke's law has to do with extension produced when a body is attached and pulled. It's attached to an elastic body then pulled and released. The elastic body will undergo extension. So, this is what we want to have a look at today. According to the question, the elastic body here is a spiral spring. And uh, we are asked to find the following questions on it. I will Pause the video for you to have a trial of the question. Alright. We are given the mass of the body to be 0 0.5 kilograms after conversion. It's 500 grams. We divide by 1000 to get 0 0.5. And the extension is 10 centimeters. Divided by 100, that will give you 0 0.1 meters. Now, the 5 cm given, as in the, the, the pulling of the body through a distance of 5 cm, that 5 cm there is just to cause confusion. It is not the extension because by the time the body is released, it will be oscillating. That means it will not stay on that 5 cm extension. Therefore, 5 cm is not extension here, and it has no role to play. So, the first question is asking us to find the force constant of the spring. So, if you want to find the force constant of the spring, you will have to employ Hooke's law that says that the force is proportional to extension. Proportional to extension. That means force equals to Ke. This is the uh, force constant we are looking at. So, that means K will be equals to F over E. And the force here is the what? Is the weight of the what? Of the body. That is the weight of the body. So, we convert this mass to weight by multiplying by acceleration of gravity G which is 10 meter per second square. So that means this will now be 0 0.5 multiplied by 10, which is used to convert this mass to weight, all over extension 0 0.1. So that will be 50 Newton per meter. That is the force constant. Now, to answer question B, which says we should find the frequency of oscillation. Under Hooke's law, we want to find the frequency of oscillation. What do we use? Well, since we are given the extension, then we are going to have will look at a formula that has to do with an angular velocity and which is angular velocity is equal to 2 pi f but we are not given the angular velocity so what do we do we recall the formula for angular velocity and the angular velocity is, according to another formula, is a one is a square root of k over mass, the first constant over mass. So that means that, in a way, these two formula are used for finding what the angular velocity. And since we are interested in the frequency, we will equate this and this together. So 
that means 2 pi f equals to square root of k over m by substitution and making f the subject we have f equals to 1 over 2 pi into root k over m so this implies 1 over 2 pi into root k is 50 and mass we are given is 0 0.5 so that will be 1 over 2 pi into root 100 and the square root of 100 is 10 so that will be 10 over 2 pi which is 5 over pi hertz that's the unit of frequency okay. <clears throat> using the value of pi either 3.142 or 22 over 7 we get 1.59 hertz which is the a unit of frequency. Now, the third question says we should find the period of oscillation. Period of oscillation. Period of oscillation is found using 1 over f because period is the reciprocal of frequency and vice versa. So, that means period, that is Roman figure 3, will be equals to 1 over 1.59 and that will give us by using calculator 0 0.629 seconds that is the period so the last question which is Roman figure 4 we are asked to find the angular velocity or angular speed which is this remember I told you that we have this equals to 2 pi f or square root of k over m. Whichever one we use, we are going to get the same answer. Let's try it and see. Now, using 2 pi f, the angular speed we give 10 radian per second. Because